Good day, everyone. Welcome, students. And this is our first audio lecture or video lecture presentation in our course BMED 105 Human Anatomy and Physiology. This is Sir Jonas Bertolome, and I will be your guide for today's lesson. Most of us naturally are curious with what is happening inside our bodies. Infants, for example, can keep themselves happy for a long time by just staring at their fingers or pulling their mother's nose. Yung mga older children naman wonder where food goes kapag yun ikinain or sinwalo nila. And some believe that they can grow or they could grow a watermelon inside their belly once na nakain daw nila yung seed nun. Yung mga older adults naman are very much worried kapag sila is nagkakaroon ng uncontrolled hot flashes or when they cannot keep their weight down at ang malala kapag daw nag nagpa-pound na daw yung hearts nila. Parang kinakabahan na baka matas na yung blood pressure. Ganyan. And those things class na nasabi ko are very much related sa ating lesson na Human Anatomy and Physiology. And this module, this lesson will be introductory pero madugong topic siya since marami talaga tayong kailangan mapag-aralan agad-agad. So brace yourselves to dance. Okay? So before turning or before formally uh, proceeding, let's go ahead to the topic outline. So, our topic for today, pala class, is the human body and orientation. So, ito po yung pag-uusapan natin, the introduction about the body of human being. Okay? So, these are the topic outline that or the topics that we need to discuss for today. So, just inform you class na itong uh, lecture na to is i-divide ko sa tatlong parts. Okay? So, our topic outline is this. Number one, we will tackle the overview of anatomy and physiology. Next is to identify the levels of structural organization. And then, uh, identify the requirements for maintaining life. And then, the highlights of this lecture is the language of anatomy, anatomical terminology, directional terms, regional terms, the body planes and sections, as well as the body cavities. Okay? And to compress the topic outline, we have the chapter objectives. Your objectives for this module is for you to identify anatomy and physiology and explain how they are related. And then identify the different levels of structural organization, explain the needs of the human body, so sorry for the typographical error, apply anatomical terminology to describe body direction, surfaces, and body planes. So if you're now ready, so please prepare your audio, video lecture, and the slide presentation as well as the lesson transcript. Kuha ka ng notebook, ball pen, and list down necessary information about our topic. If you have several questions, i-reserve mo sa feedback form. Okay? So further ado, ayan, let's start our lesson. Now, let us define these major terminologies, anatomy and physiology. First, let us define anatomy. The etymology of anatomy goes like this. The prefix ana means a way or a part. And the word tommy means to cut. Therefore, pag pinagsama, to cut apart. Anatomy is the study of the structure and shape of the body and its part and their relationship to one another. If we are looking at our bodies at a larger perspective, for example, we are identifying where is the head, where is the heart, where is the bones, the muscles. We are observing the gross or macroscopic subdivision of anatomy. Okay? Examples here are regional anatomy, which will be later system anatomy, which is based on the different organ system and surface anatomy. In contrast naman, yung microscopic anatomy is the study of body structures that are too small to be seen with the naked eye. The cells and tissues of the body can only be seen through what? A microscope. Examples ay cytology, which pertains to the study of cells, and histology, which pertains to the study of tissues. Another example is the developmental anatomy, which studies anatomical and physiological development throughout life. Example nito class is embryology because it is the study of early development of organisms or embryo. 
meron kasing mga distinct parts and form ang makikita natin sa isang fetus or embryo na hindi mo na makikita once na naging adult organism. Most, uh, especially yan sa mga other organisms than humans. Okay? So that's the definition of anatomy. It pertains to the parts, the structure, the shape, and the size of the human body. Next, let's proceed to the definition of physiology. Next slide. Kung ang anatomy ay nakafocus sa structure, form, or shape of the body, physiology, on the other hand, is the study of how the body and its parts work or function. So yes, nasabi natin yung part, pero ano ba ang function nito? That is physiology. It is from the word physio, which means nature, and logos, which is the study of. Okay, di ba pag sinabing nature, it pertains to its function and its purpose. Like anatomy, physiology has many subdivisions. As you can see in the slide, for example, neurophysiology explains the workings of the nervous system. And cardiac physiology from the word cardiac studies the functions of the heart. So basically, the function. Physiology, the function. It is also based in terms of cellular level. Since cell is a basic unit of life, okay, yo, yung structure of the body and and of the cells dictates its function in terms of chemical reactions. Question, ito. Sir, bakit po need namin parehas pag-aralan yung anatomy and physiology? Pwede po bang yung isa na lang? Well, pwede naman. Ngunit hindi mo fully mauunawaan ang mismong katawan mo without knowing its form and function as well. With that, I present to you the big relationship of anatomy and physiology. So, tatlo po yan. Pero ikokompress ko sa ganitong paliwanag. Number one, anatomy and physiology are inseparable. The parts of your body form a well-organized unit. And each of those has a job to do to make the body operate as a whole. Hindi mo pwedeng sabihin na may kilikili ang katawan natin kasi part lang siya ng katawan. May purpose to or may kilikili kasi may specific function siya na dapat gampanan. Okay? We might also say na may kakayahan tayong huminga, which is a function. But we should also indicate what specific part of the body is responsible for breathing, and that is the lungs. Hindi mo pwedeng paghiwalayin ang anatomy or the parts and physiology, the function. And then structure determines what functions can take place. For example, the lungs are not muscular chambers. Yung heart, yung heart muscular chambers yan. So, yung lungs cannot pump blood throughout the body. But because yung lungs has wall of their air sacs is very thin, they can exchange gases and provide oxygen to the body. Therefore, structure depends on its uh, function or function depends on its structure. Hindi ka makakahawak ng mga bagay kung isa lang ang daliri mo sa kamay. Tama? So throughout this course, we will stress the intimate relationship between anatomy and physiology throughout this text to make your learning meaningful. Okay, so the human body exhibits many levels of structural complexity and every levels of complexity ay may kaakibat na specific function. So we have the smallest level, which is the chemical level, followed by the cellular level, next is the tissue level, organ level, organ system level, and last is the organismal level. Let's discuss them one by one. You can post class kapag gusto nyo mas ma-highlight yung slide. So this is the overview of the structural organism as humans. Okay, so makikita natin, isa-isa natin yan. So let's start. The simplest level of the structural level or ladder, is the chemical level, which will be thoroughly discussed then sa next chapter. At this level kasi, atoms, which are tiny building blocks of matter, combine to form molecules such as water, sugar, and proteins, like those that make up our muscles. For example, hydrogen atom, two hydrogen atoms, plus one oxygen atom, will create a molecule of water. Okay? Next, 
molecules in turn associate in specific ways to form microscopic cells, the smallest unit of all living things, which will also be examined sa cellular level sa chapter 3 naman. All cells have some common structure and functions, but individual cells vary in size, shape, and their particular roles in the body. So, iba-ibang cell. Meron tayong sperm cell, meron tayong nerve cell, muscle cell, skin cell, at iba pa. Okay? The simplest living creatures are also composed of single cells like bacteria. But in complex organisms such as trees or human beings, the structural ladder continues on the tissue level. Okay? Kaya masasabi natin talaga na cell is the basic unit of life kasi meron na agad mga organisms na kahit single cell lang sila is meron na agad silang uh, characteristic of life. Next, tissue. Tissues consist of groups of similar cells that have a common function. There are four basic tissue types and each plays a definite but different role in the body. Some examples are this muscle, muscle tissue in the slide, lung tissue in the lungs and skin tissue. I-discuss din natin yan sa chapter 3. Let us proceed in the next level. An organ is a structure composed of two or more tissue types that perform a specific function for the body. The, at the organ level of organization, extremely complex function become possible. For example, the small intestine which digests, not just digests, and absorbs food is composed of all tissue types. Okay? So, as we uh, go up in the level of structural organization, mas tumataas din yung level ng complexity in terms of function. For example, um, the mass, the tissue in tissue level, ang function lamang niya, for example, is to contract. Pero pag meron na siyang kasama, or pag ito na included sa sa stomach, or sa intestine, hindi lang siya to contract the food, but also to digest it nag increase yung complexity. Next one, ito organ system naman is a group of organs that work together to accomplish a common purpose. The organ system is named because of their purpose. Okay, for example, the heart and the blood vessels of the cardiovascular system circulate blood continuously to carry nutrients and oxygen to all body cells. Can you also give some other organ system present in our body? And later, we'll have some overview about them. So in all class, there are 11 organ systems that make up the living human being or the organism, which is the last level. We have the organismal level. Okay, organism represents the highest level of structural organization. Okay, the organismal level is the sum total of all the structural levels working together to keep us alive. Okay. So from a cell, for example, bacteria, which has simple function, which is to survive, to, to eat food, to digest it, and to excrete its waste. Pero once na nag-increase ang level of complexity, yan na nga, human beings have complex function. Nag-iisip, naglalakad, may ginagawang something, nakapag-create ng mga bagay. Nag-increase yung function. Kaya structure, complexity of structure, determines the complexity of function. Anatomy and physiology. Siyempre, meron tayong tinatawag na requirements of life as well. Nakapag walang isa sa mga ito, living is not more likely to happen. Before that, let us understand first some necessary life functions. Now that we have introduced the structural level which is composing the human body, a question naturally follows. What does this highly organized human body do? Anong ginagawa nitong human body na to? Since complex nga siya. Like all complex animals, human beings maintain their boundaries, move, respond to environmental changes, take in and digest nutrients, carry out metabolism, dispose waste, reproduce themselves, and grow. Bawat organ system, for example, the digestive system, do not work not just or do not work in isolation. Instead, they work together to promote the well-being of the entire human body. Let's proceed to the necessary life functions. Meron tayong walo, if I'm not mistaken. Nabilang ko ba? So, number one, first life function is maintaining boundaries. Okay? In order for us to continue living, kailangan nating mag-maintain ng 
boundaries, hindi laging papasok ng papasok sa buhay niya, sa buhay mo. Okay? Mag-maintain ka rin ng boundaries. Okay? In order for the inside to be distinct or separate from the outside. Okay? For example, our cell sa ating katawan is surrounded by external membrane called cell membrane na kung saan ito yung nagsiseparate sa cell from the outside fluids or nagsiseparate din from the other cells. Yung membrane na rin yun ang nag ng mga essential molecules na makapasok sa cell while also preventing harmful substances to enter the cell as well. Okay, the body as a whole, alam natin, we are enclosed or protected by the integumentary system or the skin. The integumentary system protects internal organs from drying out, which is nakakamatay. Ikaw ba naman yung walang balat, mabubuhay ka kaya, <laughs> napasok kayo, naging tuyo ka na. Okay? And also, it protects us from pathogens, bacteria. Kaya ang bacteria, nandiyan lang sa balat mo. And from the damaging effects of heat, sunlight, and an unbelievable number of chemical substances in the external environment. Okay? So, kung for example, wala kang balat, tas di ba, meron tayong mga oxygen din sa ano, um, ang mangyayari dyan talagang hahabde kasi nagkakaroon ng reactions. Okay? Next life function naman is the movement. Last, please, nasusundan pa ba ako? <laughs> okay? Movement includes all the activities promoted by the muscular system, such as propelling ourselves from one place to another by walking, swimming, and so forth, and manipulating the external environment with our fingers. Diba ang astig? Because of this function, ang dami nating nagagawa. The skeletal system as well provides the bones and the muscles pull on as they work. Nagka, nag in coordination yung dalawang yan, muscles and bones. Movement also occurs when substances such as blood, foodstuffs, and maski ang urine ay propelled through the internal organs of the cardiovascular, digestive, and urinary system respectively. So yung foodstuffs, minumove siya ng digestive system through the intestines. Yung urine, namumove siya through the muscles in the urinary system and the cardiovascular system yung sa blood. Let us proceed to the third life function, which is responsiveness. Responsiveness or ability is the ability to sense changes or stimulus in the environment and then to react to them. For example, if you accidentally stepped on sa isang pieces or tae, di ba? You involuntary, involuntarily withdraw your, your feet away from that stimulus which is yung mabahong tae. Ganyan. Sorry for the term. Hindi, hindi ba, hindi mo na kailangan pang pag-isipan kung aalisin mo ba or iaalis mo yung paa mo once nakatapa ka ng tae? Di ba hindi? Di ba parang hindi mo na pag-iisipan yun? It just automatically happens. Hindi naman sabihin, ay, nakatapa ko ng tae, tas mag-ano ka pa ng 5 seconds bago mo tas siya tanggalin. <laughs> hindi ganon. Ang tawag doon class is reflex. Okay? Likewise, kapag naman ang carbon dioxide sa ating katawan ay tumaas, ang tendency ng ating breathing rate ay tataas. Kasi we will speed up to allow the, to allow the excess carbon dioxide na ma-inhale natin yung oxygen. Nervous system ang main responsible sa life function na ito. Since this organ system contains what we call nerve cell, okay, that are highly irritable and can communicate with each cell rapidly, via electrical via electrical impulses. Okay? Next one, next life function is digestion. It is it is the process of breaking down ingested food into simple molecules that can be absorbed into the blood. It is the digestive system that is responsible for this. The the nutrient rich blood which is which which contains the nutrients that came from the absorption of in the digestive system is di- distributed to all the body cells by the cardiovascular system where the body cells or where body cells use these nutrients or simple molecules for energy and raw materials next one metabolism on the other hand refers to all chemical reactions that occur in the body and all of its cells Metabolisms might be of the two. Take note, catabolism, which is the breakdown of large molecules into smaller one, just like in digestion. Ang metabolism then ay anabolism, 
which is the creation or synthesis of larger molecules from similar ones. Okay? Metabolism is regulated by hormones, which is secreted by the endocrine system. Following metabolism is the life function, excretion, which is the process of removing wastes or tinatawag na excreta from the body. Several organ systems participate in excretion, and isa na dyan ay ang digestive system ulit. Digestive system gets rid of the indigestible food residues in the body through feces. The system also does the process of excretion by disposing nitrogen-containing metabolic wastes in the form of urine or ihe, since hindi maganda sa katawan ang excessive amounts of nitrogen. Well, the skin also disposes various waste products as components in sweat, pawis. Okay? Next one is reproduction, okay? Which is one of the most essential life functions. Since continuity of life will not be possible without this function, isipin mo, kapag dalawa na lang kayo sa mundo, tapos yung kasama mo pa ay uh, parang ano, ganito na yung ganito yung itsura, parang medyo medyo hindi maganda yung balat, ganyan, tapos parang may sakit, ganyan. Anong pipiliin mo? Ma Iko-continue mo ba ang buhay ng siya ang, ang ikakasama mo? Or hindi? Okay? Reproduction yan. Okay? It is the production of offspring, which can occur in cellular and organism. Sa cellular level, ganito. The, origin, the original cell divides, producing two identical daughter cells, which is, alam natin, it is in it is through the process of mitosis or cell division. Okay? Which is yung cell division or mitosis is used for growth and repair. Dumadami ang cells, nag-grow ang katawan because of the mitosis. And the reproduction naman of the human, human organism is the task of the organs of the reproductive system, which produce sperm and eggs. When a sperm unites, with an egg, a fertilized egg forms, which then develops into a baby with the mother's body. The function of the reproductive system is regulated very precisely by hormones of the endocrine system. And the last life function class is growth, which can be an increase in cell size or an increase in body size that is usually accomplished by an increase in the number of cells, which is nasabi ko na nga kanina, through cell division or mitosis. Para mag ang growth, dapat cell-constructing activities must occur in a faster rate. Most especially nangyayari ito kapag baby ka pa lang or kapag ikaw is nasa embry uh, embryological development since mabilis ang pag-divide ng cell doon. Okay? And then kapag na-reach mo na yung katandaan, doon na na, na -de decrease yung rate ng cell constructing activities. Okay? And endocrine system ang ang main responsible for regulating growth through releasing hormones, specifically yung growth hormones. Okay lang yan kahit ano, kahit medyo kaliitan ka or medyo katangkaran ka, at least um nagugro ka naman in in your studies academically, spiritually as well. Okay? Next, so after discussing several functions of the organisms, let us discover the different organ system that plays a major role in sustaining life. There are 11 organ systems that are present in the human body and iisa-isahin natin sila. Okay, but in general sense lang, since mas malalaman nyo pa ang bawat system na yan, in detail sa mga susunod na lesson. So kalas mapapansin nyo talagang batak na batak na agad itong unang chapter. Tatagal to siguro ng mga one hour. So, please bear with this. Alam ko naman na nandyan pa kayo. Okay? Let's proceed for the, with the first system, which is the integumentary system. It is the external covering of the body or the skin, which, is, which also includes the nails and the fingernails. The nails, fingernails, or the hair. And the hair. Ang function niya is to waterproof the body. Tama? Acts as caution. Yung pag nabangga ka, yes, magkakala, pero hindi ka agad mamamatay. And protect our deeper tissues from injury. Sinuntok ka, di ba? Hindi naman masyadong, um, yes, maaring may masaktan, pero hindi madadamage. That's the role of the skin. Imagine yourself without skin. Sabi ko na nga, di ba, mahirap? 
our skin is also our skin also in the integumentary system produces vitamin D with the help of sunlight. Kaya mas ma- kaya masarap din kahit tayo ay malaki na, magpaaraw pa rin tayo. It is also excrete salt in perspiration and helps regulate body temperature. So always remember okay lang kahit pagpawisan, okay lang kahit maging baskil, okay lang kahit minsan ano, talagang kabahuan tayo because it helps us regulate body temperature kapag namamawis ka. Kabaan ka pag di ka pinagpapawisan. Okay? Sensory receptors located in the skin alert us to what is happening at the body surface. Ang skin din natin meron niyang mga nerve cells that senses stimulus outside the body. Next is the skeletal system, which consists of the bones, cartilage, which are the soft bones, and joints. Yung um, connection ng bones to bones. Siya ang nagsusupport sa body at nagpo-provide ng framework para yung mga muscles sa katawan natin will cause movement. Remember that it is not just the muscle that is responsible for that, but also the bones. If you imagine yourself without a bone, alam natin na para tayong isang suso na walang uh, shell na nagko-crawl na nagko-crawl. It also has it also has protective functions. For example, yung skull, ina-enclose niya yung brain natin. It protects the brain. The spinal cord is protected by the vertebral column. Okay? Yung buto natin dito sa likod. And then um and the cavities of the skeleton are the site where blood cells are formed. Yung mga nasa loob or yung mga spaces sa loob ng bone are the site where red blood cells are formed. The hard substances of bones also ca- acts as storehouse of minerals like calcium and phosphorus. Next one is the muscular system which consists of ma- which consists mainly of muscles, is specifically class called as skeletal muscle. Bakit po? Kasi naka-attach siya sa bones. The muscles of the body have only one function, to contract or shorten. Imagine yourself nagfe-flex, nagko-contract, nagsho-shorten 'yan. When this happens, movement occurs. Kaya kapag nag-contract ang iyong skeletal muscle, you were able to stand erect, walk, jump, grasp, throw a ball, and smile. These skeletal muscles are distinct from the muscles of the heart and of the other hollow organs like um, yung esophagus as well as the intestine. Kasi yun is nag-move ng fluids, food, or urine, or other substances na yun, along the definite pathway within the body. Let us proceed with the dermus nervous system. System is the body's fast-acting control system. It consists of the brain, spinal cord, nerves, and sensory receptors. The sensory receptors detect change in the temperature, pressure, or light and send messages via electrical signals called nerve impulses to the central nervous system, which is the brain and the spinal cord, so that it is constantly informed about what is going on. Kaya nakakasense tayo kapag mainit, kapag malamig, or nakakasense na, naglala- na nagdalamig na si Crush or si Jowa. <laughs> Joke lang. The central nervous system then assesses the information and respond by activating the appropriate body effectors, muscles, or glands, which are organs that produce secretion. Uminit, nasense yan ng iyong receptors. Idinala yung information na mainit sa brain through the spinal cord. And then sinabi ng brain na maglabas ng sweat para maging regulated, lumamig ang temperatura mo. Kaya tayo nagma- namamawis. That's the response of our body to maintain the balance in our temperature. Okay. Okay. So, next organ is like the nervous system which controls body cavities, but the endocrine system acts much more slowly. Okay? Meron tayong tinatawag na mga endocrine glands that produces molecules called hormones and release them into the blood to travel to relatively distant target parts. So, for example, um, kailangan ng, um, for example, kailangan ng uh, hormones dito sa part na to, transport yan through the blood. Okay, so endocrine glands include the pituitary, thyroid, 
parathyroid, adrenals, thymus, pancreas, pineal, ovaries in female, and testes in male. Ang mga endocrine organs, hindi tulad ng mga ibang organ system, hindi sila connected anatomically, as you can see in the picture, compared dun sa other organ system. Pero, they have common purpose, and that is they secrete hormones, which regulate body structure. Okay? Therefore, they are the regulatory mechanism of the body. Growth, reproduction, and the use of nutrients by cell are all controlled, at least in part, by hormones. Kaya kapag, karo, kaya kapag nagkaroon ng excessive release of hormones, for example, in the thyroid glands, di ba, or uh, kulang, maaring nagkikreate yan ng goiter. Okay? The next one naman is the cardiovascular system, which is also one of the most important organ system. The primary organs of the cardiovascular system are the heart and the blood vessels. Okay? Using blood as a carrier, the cardiovascular system delivers oxygen, nutrients, hormones, and other substances to and picks up wastes such as carbon dioxide from cells near sites of exchange. White blood cells and chemicals in the blood help to protect the body in such foreign invaders as bacteria, viruses, and tumor cells. The heart propels blood out of its chambers into blood vessels to be transported to all body tissues. The role of the lymphatic system naman complements that of the cardiovascular system. Its organs include lymphatic vessels, lymph nodes, and other lymphoid organs such as the spleen and tonsils. Kapag nagkaroon ng leakage ng blood sa mga tissue, ang ginagawa ng lymphatic vessels is to bring them back to the bloodstream by sealing the leak so that there is enough blood to circulate throughout the body. The, the lymph nodes and other lymphoid organs help to cleanse the blood and house white blood cells involved in immunity. Okay? The job naman of the reproductive respiratory system is to keep the body supplied with oxygen and to remove carbon dioxide. It consists of the nasal phalanges, pharynx, larynx, trachea, bronchi, and lungs. Within the lungs are tiny air sacs. And gases are exchanged with the blood through the thin walls of these air sacs. Kaya po nagkakaroon ng exchange sa, ng oxygen, napupunta yung oxygen from lungs to the blood kasi thin lang yung layers nila sa isa't isa. Okay? Kung makapal yan, hindi po makakatransfer yung air yung oxygen sa blood na matatransport sa body. Okay? Kaya, structure determines function. Next, the digestive system is basically a tube running through the body from mouth to anus. The organs of the digestive system include the oral cavity, which is the mouth, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, and large intestine. And rectum plus a number of accessory organs such as liver, salivary glands, pancreas, and others. As I have said er earlier, their role is to break down food and deliver the resulting nutrients to the blood for dispersal for several body cells. The breakdown, of, the breakdown activities that begin in the mouth are completed in the small intestine. From that point on, the major function of the digestive system is to reabsorb water. The undigested food that remain in tract leaves the body through the anus as feces. The liver naman is considered a digestive organ because the bile or a chemical it produces helps to break down fats. Yung bile, B-I-L-E. The pancreas, which delivers digestive enzymes to the small intestine, has both endocrine and digestive functions. The urinary system naman po, let's proceed here, removes the nitrogen-containing wastes from the blood and flushes them into the body in Urine. This system, often called as endoexcretory system, is composed of the kidneys, ureters, bladders, and urethra. Other important functions of this system include maintaining the body's water and salt, regulating the acid-base balance of the blood, and helping to regulate the normal blood pressure. Next. 
The role of the reproductive system is to produce offspring. At dalawa po ang type na nagtitipa The male reproductive system and the female. The male or the male testes produce the sperm. Hindi po yung penis yung nagpo-produce ng sperm, kundi the testis. Other male reproductive system structures are the scrotum, penis, accessory glands, and the duct system, or yung daanan, which carries sperm to the outside of the body. The female ovaries naman po produce egg, hindi po yung vagina, or ova. The female duct system naman, or yung daanan, consists of the uterine tubes, uterus, and vagina. The uterus provides the site for the development of the fetus or the immature infant once fertilization has occurred. Yun po yung lumalaki sa chan ng mga nanay. Uterus. Hindi po yung chan yung mismo lumalaki ha. Yung pong uterus. Okay? So, this, dito muna tayo matatapos. I'll cut this. Then, let's proceed to the next um, file or next video para sa next lesson or next part ng lesson. Thank you!